It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not you know, my dear. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop at whatever you, whatever you're doing right now. Hit that like button, that subscribe, that follow. Hit all of them on Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. We're on it as Boss Talk Podcast 101. And let me tell you, y'all know he loves to chop it up. If y'all been watching this for a while, y'all know the clips are very important. But some of y'all just love to see the full-length interviews. If you want to see the full-length interviews, check out our Patreon channel or check out our YouTube membership package. You can see it way before he start clipping. So I advise y'all, y'all go there. Yo, 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 man. Hey, man, listen, man. Stop playing, man. Hey, this guy right here, y'all, he don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man, movies. Listen, man, if you want to watch a movie, because I, listen, I got stuck the other day, man. You hear me? <laughs> man, this, this movie is crazy, man. Steve-O, tr- big Steve-O. Mm. Trust nobody too is out, man. What the heck is going on, man? What what caused you to even come up with this? Everybody asked for it. Everybody asked for it. Yeah, the way in the way part one ended, everybody say it got to be a part two. Wow, but you, I go back further to like that part one. Yeah. I want to just know like how'd you even come up with the concept because I didn't interview you on that part one. Yeah. So I'm I'm like, how did you even come up with the whole concept? Well, it's crazy because part one, believe it or not, was wrote 20 years ago. What? I wrote 20 years ago. I was uh, doing a little time and uh, still keep myself out of trouble. I, was, I started writing right. this movie. And I said, uh, when I get out, I'm, I'm going to make this. So I just had it sitting around. A friend of mine by the name of Charles Burgess, we got together, I actually took the movie script and put it into a book. So usually you get a book, then a movie. So I actually had the movie, we put it into a book. And the book went so hard that everybody just wanted to see the movie. Wow! Uh, everybody was talking about like a Donald Goins book, so everybody just wanted it. So it, it actually part two come from that because there's a part two to the book. It's supposed to have been just a one story thing. I wrote the story, a real like you got some realness to it, whatever, and it's supposed to have been that. Well, they like they loved it so hard. I had to make a part two to the book. Yeah. And when I shot the movie, it was supposed to be a one movie, but it went so hard I had to do a part two to, to the movie. <laughs> I mean, you know, but but you had to have something in you that said. This is what I want to do. When did you first know that this is where you, you know, like this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be writing movies, films. Um, this is my passion. Well, I actually come from the uh, promotion and movie and uh, music world. Okay. You know, so basically, uh, I used to be a big promoter. I did a lot of big concerts and parties in my Milwaukee city. And then um, I started my music. I had a label called Infinite Recordings. Okay. And we came up with an artist called Cuckoo Cow, who had number one hit single in my project. I'm familiar. So, so I'm How old were you when you started doing all of this? Uh, about 16, 17. Oh, promoting. young. Uh, yeah, about 18, 19, got to the music game. Wow. Yeah, so. But who turned you on to it? Uh, basically, my cousin, Mr. Do It to Death, uh, he was rapping. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had some money and I wanted to do something different with it, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, he got into a situation and I got behind him and started backing him. And just had, you know, I always had a love for music, you know, so I was a big big music fan. Mm-hmm. And then um, my cousin, Do It To Death, at the time he's Pastor Ashford now, but Mr. Do It To Death, introduced to this guy named Big Hank. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I thought he was better than Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. Wow. Was so cold. He, he was like better. Dr. Dre even stole some of his samples for, wow. for Eminem album. They know that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even Master P stole some of our work from Mr. Do It To Death. So these, this team was so hot, and we started a big label in Milwaukee, and um, from there on, it's, I ain't gonna do nothing else. You hear that a lot because of, it be like the people who really don't have that, like the, 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 the look at the time or the momentum at the time, others will come in and maybe take something or sample something or take, you know what I mean? Because they're not big enough to even go back and say, hey, you took this from me. Exactly. Right, so that's what you're referring to. Yeah, well, with the, with the Do It To Death, with Master P, uh, Duffy Rich called me out to um, L.A. Priority Records. Okay. I left him with my CD, a couple of CDs down the line, here my couple of my ideas of the song. They did it right, where you can, I tried to sue, you couldn't. But you couldn't so, do it, so but you, right. knew, you knew the, yeah, you knew the yeah. familiarity yeah. of it. Dr. Dre, he is more like, um, we finally made it on Tommy Boy Records. Cuckoo Cow album, Disturbed, came out. 
and there's a sapper in there hating on us that Dre used on Eminem album. Yeah. They did it right. We yeah, tried. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say Cuckoo Cow, I, I remember uh, Jeezy quoted Cuckoo Cow. In my project. Yeah, <laughs> like with Cuckoo, Cuckoo Cow. Cow. Yeah. With, which man Luke could see me in my yeah, Which yeah. gold mouth was up. Bell Bell was free. Yeah. He was on it, you know? Even Nas put uh, Cuckoo in his song. Nas did too. Yeah, yeah, in my project, like Cuckoo Cow. Um, on his albums too. Wow, so he referred to it. So you just that and 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 far as the, the like the Milwaukee uh, culture, was it something to where you wanted to get those looks in the city to be seen by everybody else? Yeah, we we originally sell the, the music out to Trump. You know, okay. Cuckoo Cali album called we had an album called Disturbed, and we had the single by Mr. Duke to Death right back at you, and we took him on a road for like Minnesota, Memphis. Uh, Kentucky, uh, all these different cities. Detroit, we was in the street really selling hundreds of thousands of albums, especially the uh, Walking Dead albums. Yeah. A hard album, man. And Twister on there, Mac 10, Spice One. And so mm. the album sold so hard. So Cuckoo Cow had a name in the streets. So when he made it to the majors, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the artists that was looking up to him really knew him. So Jeezy heard him, heard him from raw cuts and back when he was in Carolina, when he was running through Atlanta. You know, BMF was probably playing that stuff. It was cuckoo, you know, he's hard, man. He's hard. That's big, man. That's, yeah. that's gigantic. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm going to let you get at him a little bit because I didn't go into his history too far. <laughs> yes. So growing up in uh, Milwaukee, what was it like? I know we hear that certain parts of Milwaukee is tough, it's hood. Yeah. But for you, where you were raised, well, what I, was it I like? Come, I come from an area of Milwaukee was great. You understand? Okay. There was a lot of money around. Uh, you knew your neighbors. Uh, you go up and down the street at five, six years old, not worrying about nothing. Uh, we had the gangs out there, two seven, one nines, Trey Foe, uh, Vice Lords, and Castle Folks, stuff like that. We had the, the fights at the palace, but it was them fights were straight up fights. You know, mm -hmm. maybe a knife might get pulled. The worst of twenty two. I miss those days. Yeah, yeah. Nobody pulling guns, try to shoot somebody. No, nah, no, nah, it was it was all love back then. Like right. Was, we had a thing called Juneteenth, but um, Juneteenth Day. Right. We'd be outside till like two in the morning. Selling your product, out there getting money. Everybody walking down the street playing music. So Milwaukee was real great back then. Did you have a lot of police harassment? No, I mean, no, not really. I mean, police always gonna be police. You know okay. I mean? okay. They don't fuck with who they fuck with, but mm. it wasn't like it wasn't like today. You know, we, okay. we had a couple of crooked cops around the town. All the drug dealers used to be scared of, but uh, <laughs> but you know, t today's Milwaukee is totally different. It's just mm -hmm. a murder in town. We know for some shit called like the Kia Boys stealing wow. cars and. Uh, it's murders every day. It's, just, it's rough now, you know. Are you an only child? No, no, I got a, uh, well, my mother got two brothers uh, and a sister. You know, rest in peace to my brother, Ra Ra, who's played full character and um, Trust Nobody. Oh, wow. Uh, then I got outside Stephanie, Pee Wee, and uh, my sister Tanya, who passed. But, uh, mm, yeah. Rest in peace. But I'm the oldest of, of my mother's children. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, your father, he was not in the household while you were growing yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give prayers out to my father, too, right now. He's in the hospital fight for his life. But, uh, oh, wow. Prayers go. What's yeah. his name? Exy. Exy. Actually, he's in Trust Nobody 1 and 2. Oh, really? He is? <laughs> yeah. What did yeah. he play? Which part did yeah, he play? Part one, uh, he was, he's, he's in, uh, in jail when Gravy first walked past, told him keep, keep safe, young man. Uh-huh. And part two, he's playing a preacher. <laughs> oh, the that's the one. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I told him when I was watching part two, why does your dad resemble her? They look like the they girl, could be, they, yes. Yeah. Hey, I told might him, be one of his children. He's yeah. a rolling stone now. She tried to tell me that. I said, no, I'm like, no. Like that. I'm like, I, I told him, I was like, I, I bet you that's no. her dad. I bet you that's What'd her I dad say? in real life. What did I say? was a rolling stone. No. No. <laughs> she might be really your sister. You don't hey, you know. Never, hey, no, hey, I ain't find out I had a sister until uh, my sister Stephanie until I was 21. Oh, wow. really? He's always saying I had a daughter out in New Jersey and New York. We all thought it was lying, you know. But it actually did. You know, love her to death now. But they meet her until we were 21. So y'all had, so your dad, you and your dad had a great, have a great relationship? Yeah, you know, you know, he was in and out of jail a lot, but uh, the, the times he was, he was there. He taught me how to be a man. You know, mm -hmm. he uh, taught me the value of hustling, you know, as, a, as like a, a having something for yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, save my life, telling me how to, how a driver's license is very important. It can save your life. Doing the right things to keep yourself in order if you're going to do anything wrong. To, to, to learn the laws, you know. Uh, he taught me how to be a man, you know. He taught me how not to cry like oh, over, over petty stuff yeah so maybe the man i am today so I can say that's that. big that's wow. big yeah. that's big and i'm gonna say this man like you you talented bro to even do what you've done mm -hmm. in, in in to create these vibes for us we appreciate it yeah. um like how long did it take you like to like write out you know what i mean the whole moving from the finish to the end 
like I said, when I first wrote it, I kind of like, how I do my movies is I kind of like beginning, the plot, the end. Okay. The rest you feel in. Uh, so don't take me, like I wrote a movie with it like uh, sometimes two weeks. Really? Less than 30 days, yeah. I got help too now. Like I write I write the stories, so I either put them on a tape recorder, and I got my, my, got my team, so I got to get a shout out to uh, Violetta. Shout out to your team. Violetta, uh, Joseph, Violetta Jonas. Joseph was, wrote with me on part one, part two, and something else that you already talked about. <laughs> and she wrote, so she wrote with those with me. Um, I, have a, I have a partner called uh, Charles Burgess. He's a, uh, he comes a storyteller. He does a lot of books. We did a movie I got called Unfair Exchange. Okay. So we wrote that. Um, he wrote the majority of it. I wrote the ending of it. Change it up, and then I got a partner called Mr. Galena. Uh, they call him um, Mr. Galena, but like that. We got we got one called Between Thin Lines and God in the Game. You know what I mean? Then me and Jalen, I got one called um, uh, What's the name? We got the comedy everybody talking about the hole in the wall. So we like said so my guy, Baby Drew, gave me the idea. Me and Jop, me and Violetta, we wrote it. Okay. Even though we shouldn't have wrote it because we was on set, didn't nobody follow the goddamn script. <laughs> <laughs> but we wrote, we wrote something. But yeah, so it, it takes me anywhere from like, I'm gonna say two, three weeks to most. I ain't going over 45 days from the script. Yeah. Do you get, where do you get inspiration for your stories from? Mostly real life. Real life, somebody's. Um, so have you ever but I like, like comedy, I like, I like movies too, so I can see something or read something and give me an idea too. No, but when you get these ideas from something like, from somebody's life mm. that you know, you know, some people be like, you, you have to keep it, you can't put, make it too true. So exactly, to say, yeah, because yeah. you don't want somebody giving you a comeback, like, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don't yeah. be, don't, they gonna know it's yeah. me you talking about. Yeah. Don't do that. I ain't had that happen before, so yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially to trust nobody. Wow, exactly. Trust nobody one. Oh, probably, wow. That's probably about the realest thing. I probably came close to writing. Yeah. A lot of uh, real events that happened that in the city. Sort of that way, yeah. Yeah. Part of my life, life I was around, so yeah. Because so. I tell them all the time, a lot of time when I talk about things, because I love to watch movies. And I learn a lot from movies. And when I tell him, um, he's like, stop living in movies. I'm like, but where do you think they get, they get these yeah, ideas yeah, from? Man. It's reality. It's real life. It's just like training day. You think training day was just made up? That mm. thing was good, too. Yeah, it's a cricket cops for real. It's like very that. much cricket mm-hmm. cops. They know we're being a cricket cop country. They, they ain't that, gang. You know, that, they that's real. They gang. So. Right. Yeah, it's, it's truth is every movie. These, believe it or not, the alien movies or something. Some kind of, you know, it might probably be some far-fetched, but it's got to be come from something. How do you draw from like getting the like your cast together on these movies? How hard is it to pull those people? The right people. Yeah, the right people. Um, I write it first. Sometimes you can see somebody that you might want in the film. Okay. And, and help you kind of write for them. They that character to, to their best uh, attitudes or how they act, their best abilities you can get out of them. Like this guy is funny, so I want to write funny, something funny. This guy looks like he's a killer, so I want to write make him a killer. So, but. Uh, like gravy to get him to play bricks. Uh, everybody thought it maybe came from the Notorious, but it didn't. Yeah, mm. I seen him in the Notorious. I thought he was great in that. You know, he made you feel biggie. But that didn't, that didn't would catch me. He caught me in barber shop. Looks like you're on the wrong side of town, nigga. Boy, this whole city is mine. These are my block. When he played mm-hmm. the game, mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. even talk to him about that, man. Yeah, yeah that was I me. He was yeah. in the barbershop. And that and that's, what, that's what made you take but, in. But the, the, part, the crazy part about it, because God's so great, man, I love God, is that I seen that, I'm like, man, I'd be, I'd be good to have a minute, right? So a friend of mine named D. Rose up in Appleton, Wisconsin, he called me because he know I do parties. He's like, hey, Steve, I'm doing a party up in Appleton. Maybe you want to partner with me on it and bring it to Milwaukee. Who you bring it? I'm bringing Jamal Willard, who do the play Biggie. I'm like, cool, you know what I'm saying? So we did it. We go to Appleton, the party didn't do too good. So Gravy driving back with me. We just talking, chopping it up. And we just came real cool, you know what I mean? Like real, real nigga shit, real talking. And um, so me, business time. Hey, man, I'm doing this movie, right? Hey, man, I think you play good in this role. He said, shit, I'm with it. Get the bag and let's go. And we've been jamming since. Oh, yeah. That's big, wow. man, to build a relationship. That we talked about it earlier. Like, wow. how big is relationships when you're doing stuff like this when it comes oh, down man, to projects? Real big, man. Like uh, like I said, I manage Boosie and uh, uh, not manage but I do business manager with him. So yeah, I like yeah. Looker and yeah. stuff like that. So knowing him and we on the road meeting other people and just doing all these parties. I did a lot of NBA parties with LeBron James, uh, Damian Jones, Sam mm. Cassell. So being in that world, I get to meet a lot of people and I save my favorites, you know. Man. So uh, it's big, you know. Like even, even, even with, with um, Fat Boy SSE. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't know who he was when I met him, believe it or not. I met him in New Jersey 
with Boosie, we was doing a cologne deal. He wanted to meet Boosie, so he showed up. Okay. Right? And his energy right there, so his energy, I was like, man, he'd make a good role, because he reminded me of my brother so much. I'm like, man, he'd make a good person for this role. And then when I went to look him up, I said, oh, shit, yeah, social media. Been, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. So I'm telling you, like, God, work, man, it's crazy. Yeah. But um, so when you're selecting someone to act, is it very important for them to actually have acting um, skills before, or it doesn't matter no, for man, you? I, I, I give everybody, I give a lot of people chances, man, like the beautiful lady Bianca Starr. I met her when I moved to Atlanta, and uh, we try, you know, we tried to go on The Voice. I, had, I knew the people that owned The Voice, and I tried to take care of auditions, and we came real cool. And uh, when this role came up for the one of the roles, I knew she was a star already singing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put her on these on these on these big lights. Might help her out in her singing career. Yeah, and, that was her uh, song in that movie, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. On her part, because I heard that part. I'm yeah, like, I bet you that's her. Yeah, it was her. It was her a part yeah. too. And yeah. she also had the theme song, song "Her and Gravy" together called "Trust Somebody." At the end, really, that's her and Gravy together. Okay. Singing. So when um so people like that, and a lot of my hometown people got all these respect and support Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them people that I see something in them, I gave them a chance. Like they didn't have to act before. Uh, Shay Johnson, you know, is from my hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, I said years before when I do this movie, I'm going to put you in it because you, you represent the hometown. You uh, got on TV, but I want to I want to I want to put the lights on you. Right. I mean, you're on Love and Hip Hop and uh, Flavor of Love and stuff yeah. like that. They showing you in one way. But I want to show your true talent and that's why exactly. I put it in Trust Nobody One. So yeah, like like they ask you questions like and they always I, I, I prefer that somebody with some acting feel, acting skills because you want a It'd good be movie right. yeah but if I but you know I, I believe in giving people a try because I always mm -hmm. want to try well, when you kill them out in the first one like how is that like with bringing them back you can bring them back as a ghost that's, that's the role you got <laughs> <Where>? <laughs> but you can bring them back as a ghost if you're nice. He can if it's that, that kind of movie. <laughs> Depending right. on what you did on the set. <laughs> but no. No, I just I just know that dealing with people and picking people and building these relationships, you have to have a certain chemistry to even be able to deal with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 knowing that that's going to be the person for that role, that's a gift in itself. Right? Yeah. So it's like a lot of those are key factors and key elements that you see that seem seamless when you're watching the film. But I know for you, yeah. it becomes a thing where you got to think it through properly or else yeah. it can make or break you, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and when writing the, because you said in the beginning, you do, you do the beginning, then you do the plot, and then you do the ending. Yeah. How important it is, because some movies, you know, some movies start off slow and yeah, then you yeah, want to yeah. switch it. How important it is to grab the audience attention in the beginning. Very important in today's world. Mm -hmm. you know, our, our, our attention span nowadays are like, if you don't give them the first 40 seconds, they can flick into the next movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they, yeah. They're on their Instagram all day just rolling and rolling and rolling. Mm -hmm. So you gotta give them like this. Yeah. Nowadays, you know? Ain't nobody sitting around waiting for uh, the plot nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's mm -hmm. very important. So I tell everybody, the right movies like man you better get them fast yeah. yeah if you see all my movies I'm in the beginning I'm, I'm catching you in the beginning <laughs> oh you know yeah I mean? you you bang it out there you bang it <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering because a lot of times people who write usually make some sort of cameo in their own movies so I was sort of looking to see if you were going to be <laughs> in there John Singleton yeah. would do that he always or do that Marvel movies I didn't know he did that that's why he told me he was did the you see man it? yeah he no, did it every time but I got it from after, uh, Albert Hitchcock uh, Albert Hitchcock that's where I got it from he, like, he's all in all his movies he'd be sitting at the bar or he'd do some yeah. weird stuff so I said I'm going to do that so I make yeah. a little periods and all that's that. good man because that's something that your kids 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 can see yeah, yeah. that's big I even put my nephews and, and, and nieces in some of my movies already. oh that's dope like the little boys see upstairs that's my nephew Ron uh -huh. uh, Romero so yeah my brother that's Gucci in it. so I put family best friends everybody in my movie I think that's hard pops. man like <laughs> pops pops that's, that's big right there yeah, yeah. I wish I could see my father yeah. and mother again through yeah. a film right now exactly. hadn't seen my mother since 96 mm. hadn't seen my uh, my father since 2012 yeah. they passed on but if I had something to go back to other than a picture yeah. cause we, we get so caught that was the reason I created Boss Talk 101 cause I said you know what one, we need to be doing this to help our people to give their story out. Two, we need to make sure that when we leave, we leave a legacy behind. Exactly. How better to do it than to bring, you know, bring something like this together, do movies, do different things that people are going to go back and watch and they can draw energy from it. Drink my mom forever, Ricardo. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's I mean, that's big, tequila is in right now. That's a uh, new drink. Yeah. Everybody's time. drinking tequila. Big time. Exactly. Man, so, um, like, when is, what's the next, what's the next project? 
Uh, right now, we dropped the uh, Trust Nobody too. Okay. It's on Amazon Prime. I got it. It'll be on Tubi June 23rd. Oh, it's going to Tubi? Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to drop The Hole in the Wall, which is a funny, funny comedy. It's going to bring Really? Uh, Who's in it? Uh, we got a lot of comedians such as we got Baby Drew, who's a, a big rapper out of Milwaukee. Uh, he was on Universal for a minute. Um, comedian wise, got Kelly Kells. Mm-hmm. Cheating ass Myra. I was about to say that's the one. That's that my guy. Ass Myra. I talked to him okay, yesterday. Yeah, cheating ass Myra. Yeah. Uh, um, Jesse McDonald. That's yeah. my guy. Yeah. I, I ain't uh, called him yet. I need to call him. Uh, Gravy make an appearance in <laughs> Gravy, there. Gravy, yeah, uh, man. Rest in peace. Four on four. Bankhead. He wow. he was in there. Yeah, he's in there. Uh, we have uh, man, I got, I got Detroit Barbie, Shelby. I got a uh, little mama. I got my man Reggie. I got a uh, man. I got so many comedians. It's, it's gonna be a classic. Little mama. I haven't seen her in a while. Really? Wow. So it's, 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 you it's really it, fun. It's funny. I got a question for you. Like, how Jiggle do, Jackson. <laughs> how do you, like, if somebody, have anybody ever passed while you were doing the film and you had to figure out a way to keep the film going? Uh, God forbid, not yet. Okay, because that happens with a couple of people I've, yeah. I've interviewed. Yeah. And, stuff. and it was like, Paul, dang. But even like Fast and Furious, Paul Walker. Yeah, but my boy, you know, uh, Mr. E. When you talk, yeah. you talk doing while they during doing the, During the filming. Oh, yeah, not yet. Mi- like, like Mr. E, Mo3, he, he passed away during that, you know, why, when he was filming that. Oh. Right. And he had to, you know, figure it out after that. You got to figure out what you're going to do. Yeah. Kind of like when Jamie, you know, Jerry they st- they start showing that, that stunt in. double. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's crazy, but these are things that happen. Yeah, exactly. That's the reason I brought it up. Yeah. Because these are life changing situations for the whole cast, people you've been working with. The mood of the film might change at that point. Yeah. Which the, the chemistry because the it's not chemistry, the same person. It's yeah. like it's a lot, man. And then you got big budgets behind these films, and it's like you got to figure it out. Yeah, get it done. Yeah, got to figure it so out. So starting out, um, what was the name of the first film you did? Trust nobody is the first one. Oh, yeah, that is the first, is first one. Film. So um, with somebody like watching this show, a kid, because nowadays, because growing up, I never thought that a regular person could get up and try to be a filmmaker, right? It, mm-hmm. it just didn't seem possible. I used to think that it was all these big companies, big corporations. No. Just even like actors, growing up and seeing actors on screen, um, growing up is always big name, big people. I never saw, you know, back then it wasn't no to be or no, you know. Um, yeah, there were no avenues for us, you know. Right. All, all the... Um, Majors locked us out, but now it's yeah. an independent world, just like these podcasts. Right, man. that's why like, I love you it. You know, it's, it's like a, it's only a, you only can see this on this kind of stuff on radio. Mm-hmm. You know, but now y'all think y'all doing is great, giving us outlets to voice. get our stories, our voices out. Mm-hmm. And like I said, um, I gotta give shouts out to my man Swift from Swift Motion Pictures, who uh, was the first one in my town. I've been rolling my movie. We hooked up because I had hooked him up with this book deal. He was doing a book. He's like, still want Detroit to shoot my movie. Come check it out but I didn't get to make it to this first one yeah. called Circumstances. So um, he kept telling, telling me, like, man, you got to go and do this movie. Do it, do it. I'm going to do it. got to be right, right. So he did Circumstances 2 in Milwaukee. Yeah. Said, man, just come on the set. So I yeah. came on the set, and I got to meet the great BZ Jones. I hey. the a director. And um, BZ had this crew with Tino and Zeke and Cheese. I met the whole cast. And I said, I'm a quick learner. And I sat back and I watched the process. I said, shit, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. come from the music where I can, I can do this for sure. And they all tell you, I'm a quick learner, and uh, I brought a lot of experience to the world. And uh, so those guys really got me, really just gave me that. In a range, in a range, how, ex- how, what's the cheapest and what's the most expensive? For a person starting out, don't have a lot of money, mm-hmm. uh, that they can, you know. Create a film? Create a film. Uh, mine's been around 150 because of the talent that I bring in. Um, you fly people in, you house them, you feeding them, uh, and all the other extra stuff you got to put into it besides the promotion. You get in what you put out. Yeah, but I, I mean, you some, get out what you put in. Exactly. But I see some people shoot some movies for like uh, 20000 10000 20000 mm, Do good. They do, they, they, the guys from the PPP loan, I think they said only spent to like ten or 15000 but they got their own cameras, their own yeah. crew, maybe their own friends. Like I said, it all depends on you. If you got your, let's say, let's say if you're a student at a school, and you, and you get all the people together, you be like, hey man, let's shoot a movie. Like, you know, you're gonna do the camera work, you're gonna do the grit, you're gonna do this. We in school anyways. Mm-hmm. You might get done about 10, 15,000. Get you a good movie. That's right. Because you got access to all the equipment. But I would think that it would be very important if this is what you want to do for the rest of your life, yeah. that for you to invest in getting the cameras, getting, you know, certain cameramen. Because, you know, yeah. people fall off. So even that cameraman that you have might not be the cameraman you have in the next four or five yeah, years, yeah. but at least you still have the equipment. Exactly. You can get somebody else to work that equipment. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. I invest in myself, like all my own props, 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 I'm sorry, and mm-hmm. um, 
cameras. I've been learning how to edit myself. You know, I've been practicing. Oh, Yo, you I been editing? It I ain't, I ain't what? Shit. Let's go. I've been working with Final Cut. I've been working with just messing around with it, you know. So uh, I think it's important I got a busy for you schedule, to do but so. I've been trying to learn, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been learning how to direct. I've been direct. I'm co-director on all my films. Oh, so I'm is it hard? Easy. No, I love it because Beezy is a great teacher. So Beezy be on the set showing me and I watch it. Uh, they, like they like this last film I did, they taught me now how the process go. Cause I used to be the, the mess up. I fuck up all the times. Be like sticks, uh, you know, because everything means something. Though. So I know now you gotta say, uh, you know, sound roll. Then you gotta say cameras roll. They say oh, okay. set. So I, it, the, the right turn. See, I would have never knew, uh, known all that. I, I, I was shooting like if you ever seen the Eddie Murphy uh, movie, uh, by Dolomite, the making of Dolomite. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, when he said, uh, we don't know about that shit. I'm just trying to shoot a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I chop a motherfucker up. I was, you know, yeah. so I was just shooting a movie, but they've been teaching me the right terms. Oh, okay, like, that's so. dope. So, who makes more, a um, director or the writer? Definitely the writer. The writer. <laughs> okay. Now, wait, wait. No, I ain't gonna say that. Depending on if it's his movie. Oh. Because because you know sometimes you can write a movie and sell the script. Mm -hmm. And depending on the director, the director might get So that. if you write it and it is your movie, then you make it. Oh, you more. definitely are. Yeah. Okay. Just want to know because, you know, people want to know what avenue to start out first. Okay. You can make more over there. If I have but the skills can, to write, let me go ahead and write. you can make money. Now, you always ain't got to be the writer or the, or the producer or the film. So much money you can make in that, like being a grit man, you know what I'm saying? When you set up the set, the lights and things like that. They make good money. Uh, yeah, you can uh, be the editor, you know, you can be the uh, the DA, the, the person behind the scene who, who dumps the film. And, man, you know, you can be just helping out on the set. You can make some good money per day. So you can make money just like in the rap world. You know, everybody think to be a rapper. Fuck the rapper part. I'd rather be the manager or the engineer. The producer exactly. make money. You know, the role manager. It's yeah. a lot of money. You know? But how many people do you need to create other than the actors? Behind the scenes, because you call a lot of different um, titles just now. How many people do you need to film a movie? So, depending on what kind of movie, like an independent movie. Yeah, I, independent I, movie. I want to say you shoot with two cameras. I want to say you're going to need at least, uh, you need a sound man. Probably at least six people. Six people to to shoot a small independent film. Sound small, lights. So small. So sound lights. Cameras. Grip. To cameraman. You have your uh, the set. You have on the set. Mm -hmm. You know you have an AD. A person. What's who, an AD? So AD is assistant director. She kind of uh, sets everything up for the director. Uh, kind to. But do you have do, to have an assistant director? You should. Okay. <laughs> you okay. Should, you should. It take a lot off you. Trust me. That, okay. That's a very important person on the set. Okay. You know, you have like I said, the DI person who actually dumps your footage. Mm -hmm. So like that person um, takes care of your footage. So the next day when you come, you can see how your film looking. It's kind of partially edited. You might forget what person wore this this day because this scene might got to go with this scene. And you forget, so you go, oh yeah, in a black outfit. So go get that black outfit again. You need the wardrobe person, mm. take care of the wardrobe, makeup. control the wardrobe, the makeup person, the hair person. The hair person. So yeah, so I'm gonna say about ten for <laughs> I'm saying six. Man, yeah. nah. go ahead. What was so important about Trust Nobody Part One, where you felt like, man, I gotta do a part two? The audience. The audience. <laughs> they asked for it. It was bad. But I'm gonna tell you, it came, actually came from the book. Uh, when I wrote this book. And uh, yeah, I put it out. Actually, it was a movie written, a movie first turned to a book. Mm. This my man Charles. You Burgess. did the opposite. Yeah, because I wrote the, I wrote, I was writing a movie. I wasn't writing no damn book. Mm. But my man Charles Burgess like, man, let me help you put this in a book. Man, it's a good story, so I put it in a book. So I'm getting the book out, and two things happened to me. Um, this older lady, I was in a bar selling my book. I'm selling it like crazy, and uh, she was about fifty some sixty. She's ever gonna read books like this, <clears throat> but she bought it, took it home. I ran back into her a couple weeks later. She was like, I was reading your book. At first, I was like, I don't read your book. Like, she said, I was gonna put it down. She said, oh, let me give it a little more chance. She read a little bit more. She said, I couldn't put this motherfucker down. She told me that, she said, man, this was a great book. Like Donald Goins or something. And then people from, from 14 to 70 is reading this book. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. gauge out. And then my father was up in the joint and everything in the joint just passed the book around. Everybody was getting mad. Man, Briss can't go on like that. Oh no, man! It gotta be a part two, man. That's so that made me like, damn, this is really something special. So the book that you wrote, it wasn't like the whole story. It was just still just part one. So the book was the book just part one that you wrote the book for? Yeah, yeah. It, I'm telling you, it was just supposed to be a one story one thing. One story it, thing. It was just a movie on about five, six pieces of paper. <laughs> and it, you know what I'm saying? It's not more than that, but it had you know my papers on my little white. I mean my little the yellow pad. The legal pad notebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was it. That was supposed to be a knit, like a story. Yeah. And, but 
I turn to a twister. God is the reason, ain't he? Yeah, all the How time. important is God when it comes down to oh, what man. you do and who you are? Man, look, I care. Just Stop playing. They call me the mafia, man. Come I, on now. I've had this all since a kid. You that's know hard, man. man. Everywhere I go, just go with me. And that's a, 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 like he's back on what you're saying. Like that's come from my father. That's he taught me how to pray when I was about three or five, between three and five years old. I'm gonna remember that vividly. Vividly, so getting on my knees. He showed me how to pray. Man, pray, that's a blessing, man. Yeah. And that's what I teach my kids. Like before we came down here, it's like we got to stay. We stop in the house. Me and the family, we pray. We about to go on this trip. We going down here to do some work and then when we you know God bring us back keep our hedge of protection around our family these are the things that me and real men yeah. and, and I didn't get to tell Jamal but my thing is when a person listen what's gangster to me is taking care of your family and kids all day long that's so much gangster than all this other mess that we have out here bro man I'm gonna tell you so my uncle gave me the, the best saying in the world he used to tell me true players play around the penitentiary Wow. So going to jail ain't slick. Mm -mm. Any motherfucker bragging about going to jail, let me did something stupid. Real stupid. When you got caught doing something dumb. You got caught. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying it's wrong for you to take circumstances to feed your family. And I'm not promoting it, but you got to do what you got to do. But be a smart way about it, because bragging, talking about I did this much time. I was up in the joint running like this, because you ain't doing been a burden on somebody. That's right. Like, especially like when I did my little time, I had to call nobody, because I saved my, I prepared for that, save a little money before I had to bother nobody. And that's so something? you go to jail, you're bothering people, calling people, running up their phone bills. That ain't gangster. That's that ain't gangster at all. No. Being a peasant, right? No. You, that is so true. And and you got to be real with yourself in order to teach the people coming behind you when you yeah. say stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Without you speaking it, uh, people think that they, they tell you everything about going to jail, about prison. They don't ever tell you about how naked they be getting in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you ain't hear me. The true stories. The true stories. Come on, now. Yeah. They don't tell you about uh, you, you, you. You gotta walk together in a line and be. It it, demand, it, it really it, it looks at you, you and demeans you and make you look like really like you un, unhuman. They don't. They take everything away and, and people don't really want to talk about that part. Uh, that's about the real part exactly. You know, like when you first go to jail, your family get all excited, be like, "Oh, so so in jail, we gotta get him out of jail." You take a couple of calls, but after that first <laughs> six months, you forget it's about over, right? You become a pest. Nobody want to talk to you all on the phone about nothing. You. You know, I mean, you're going to accept calls and stuff, but, you know, you call every day, but people get tired of that. They don't want to deal with you just throwing their life they, down. They can't see you money every goddamn month. They ain't got it like that. <laughs> but they try to live on the street. You know what I mean? <laughs> now you become a burden. That's, That's just so true. Time. So, you, gonna, you know, you're going to do that. Put you some money up shit if you want to bother nobody. Man, but, I, like when you look at movies, man, and, and you sit mm -hmm. back and you analyze them, man, now that you're doing them, um, how, critique, how, how much do you critique them? Uh, a lot. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, before yeah. you wasn't into them, but, but now you know, that you're doing them, you like, ah, that right there. But I, I, I watch good movies so I can get better. That's real. Like, ooh, like, like, like little stuff like this, like the boss talk cups on the table. That's a problem. That's, that's, that's a sport in the that's movie. That's right. You said you have an empty ass table. Table. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, look, stuff like that I look for. Man, it should be a plate and she has some food on there and the, and the fork should be on that side. and That's <laughs> a little, little stuff. Everybody starts somewhere. Tyler Perry, I was just reading in an article yesterday BET. that he, he purchased BET. And yeah. VH1. And, 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 and VH1. And VH1. Oh, and VH1. Okay. That's yes. big. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, how yeah. inspirational is that when you see brothers that's out here doing stuff kind of similar to where you're starting now and saying, man, you know, that's something to inspire to, you know, like pretty much taking the mantle. Ownership like, is everything. Yeah, that's very important. Ownership. I own my own stuff. You know what I mean? Ain't selling out. I've been through that with the music. Um, Tyler Perry, before he even bought BET, I was trying to follow his uh, blueprint as in uh, when I heard he bought that land in um, Atlanta, built that studio. Mm. That's big. I, I want to do that in Milwaukee. And I just came from Detroit. Shout out to TT and uh, the, uh, the R1 studio. I hope I'm saying it right. Her and Dennis Reed got a studio up there. And uh, it's beautiful, man. They got their own sets, mm. uh, hospitals, jails. I mean, they, they, they laid it, it out. It saves you money in the long run. It might, well, definitely. Uh, it might you know, it cost headache. you a lot in the beginning, yep. but in the long run, yeah. Or just a headache, too, because, you know, they don't want to rent some of their stuff to us, like the courthouses mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, jail cells, stuff like that. And you can build, like, a mini hotel there so you can house all your actors exactly. and actresses right there. there you you know. don't have to. Because sometimes, <laughs> depends, to me, I would think that when you get gotten so big, you don't want to put certain people in just a regular hotel, no matter how nice the hotel is. Yeah. Sometimes they want that peace. They don't want to walk downstairs and people be like, oh, can I get your autograph? Can I just... Sometimes people just want that peace away. If they get, if they get alone. <laughs> 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 that too. Sometimes I was still that motherfucker. That too. <laughs> but no, like you said, it's very smart to build your own hotels. And right. What, what Tyler Perry doing is great, and uh, that's the level I'm trying to get on myself. Yeah. When you look at um, 
Jamie Foxx, I got to ask you about it because that's something that's big in the news right now. Um, and seeing how his situation is playing out, they're very quiet about it. They're not really speaking on it. Nobody's heard from Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, like, how scary and how big is that? Like, and, and health. Health is wealth, bro. My health is wealth, man. Like, like I said, I'm dealing with my father right now. And like you, I heard you say when you were interviewing Gravy that, you know, you hustle so hard, you, you forget about the family values. The yes. It's important to take a break. Uh, my auntie's uh, male friend, uh, he told me, like, man, Steve, you got to take three vacations for yourself a mm -hmm. year at least, at least two. I always take one with my wife, so we always go somewhere in the summer and maybe for New Year's, but sometimes I leave that phone on. I wait for the bag until mm -hmm. I got to go. But now I'm more like, man, I really spend more time with my family. Because at the end of the day, that money... People waste money all the time all and the lose time, it all yeah. the time for different investment reasons or whatever. Yes. But at the end of the day, the only person that can take your memory is God. Exactly. You know, and even when he do take, if you notice it, uh, people with Alzheimer's, yes. he don't take all their memory. They can selective. remember. They remember when they were younger. Probably really good shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take <laughs> the bad shit. Fuck yeah. yeah. the bad shit. It's really good time. That'll be a good way to go out, though, yeah. if you're going to go out like that. Yeah. 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 Stuff, all the good stuff. I don't want to talk about nothing. Man, I'm just saying, let's <laughs> have the Twix ice cream or something. Yeah. You know, get all the ne negativity that the world put in you, but it's a good time. Yeah, and, and like like sponsorship is big. Like, and I, I see you, you know, with tequila, you, tequila. you got the. Tyler or more. Okay, and, and, and so, like, how big is that? Like, trying to get placements in the movies that you, you know, do? Uh, well, my movies, man, I try to open it up to all my black designers. Like, yeah. I tell them all the time. Um, Shouts out to Boss Maddie, my man, K. He, uh, he, and guess what? He's he Mexican. Yeah. Oh, wake, right. up, wake up from my times. So I put him in there. That's B. My man That's right here, cool. Caviar. Put him in there. Yeah, a real big coat line out Milwaukee, black on. You know what I mean? Wow. Uh, my man Bashar, he got the, uh, the masonry um, clothing. That's uh, he always sp uh, sponsor my films. A guy called uh, Joe Finn. I just use his bag. A black brother out of um, Detroit got the, got the nice handbags. Uh, King, uh, this King uh, gummies that this. It may enhance me right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going down. Yeah, but if you, if you black owned and you got some, uh, and there's a lot of other small, even the small people that ain't big, they got like t-shirts and they're making them, you'll see them in my films, man. That's I, big. I, I want to give them a shot. That, and that's I'll tell you huge. something else is real big I've been doing too. People don't understand this. I've been giving independent artists music in my stuff because this is a platform for you that you couldn't get nowhere else. That's real. Radio ain't playing the big movies. They ain't going to take your soundtracks. But this Tubi world and this Amazon world, is, is really a big platform that you gotta look into. If you're an artist, you should be wanting to find out what movie that is, who that producer is, and find it for his next film. Be like, I got a song for you. I'll create these a song for you I'm hungry. So, how yeah. far are you gonna take Trust Nobody to? When I say how far, Stop meaning- that. When I say- <laughs> you trying to get him home. <laughs> when I say, you know, you got part <laughs> one, you got part two, but how, are you gonna be like a Superman? You know Superman go up to like part, um, Whatever. I mean, they always open their mouth, all the actors, I mean, they're all happy and excited about it. We were working on a part three, you know. That's uh, big. But don't forget, watch part one, watch <laughs> part two. <laughs> part two didn't hit Tubi yet, so the world ain't even seen it yet. I mean, a lot of people have seen it, a lot of people haven't yet. But you're going to love us, a lot of action, but three isn't the worst yet. I love so it. So you can go forward? Do you have enough in the catalog to go, like... That's what I'm trying uh, to man, figure man. out. Like, what? How? What does a writer? Okay, how much you got to take? No, because how, what determines a writer to say, okay, I got to stop it here. I don't want to burn it out. So, uh, part three is called uh, "Who Can You Trust?" The final chapter. Okay. okay. So this will be the last. Wow. Of, uh, of trust okay. nobody. But I never say it with no spinoffs. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, you know, what do you ever want to do? A series uh, or anything like that? Yeah, oh, yeah, I got, I got a series. The world series called uh, "I Am the Plug." Okay. Cool. Um, I also got a series. Uh, we're working on maybe me, murder, and a gravy talking about tie by blood. Yeah. Uh, murder, pain, and gravy. Uh, I got a movie I'm going to put out called uh, a, a Thin Line Between God and the Game. Yeah. How about kind some romance? Like um, oh, man. Films. I got a great romance. I got a um, Unfair Exchange is out right now with uh, uh, Jeremy Meeks, the guy from the, from the yeah, you know he is. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah, I called him my prison baby. Yeah, prison baby, Watch yeah. out, watch out. Yeah, yeah, don't give me trouble on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we got him in there. We got Erica Pickett who played the Tupac and BML. Okay. I got uh, uh, Angela Sierra in there, Sierra Angeli, and uh, Demarcus Harvey, uh, Shelby uh Lynch and also my man, I give his first role, uh, Adrian Bagger, the great blues singer. So all of them in that film. It's a great film. They loving that. Like I one called Oceans of View, mm -hmm. written by Mr. Galena, and it's uh, about a young lady 
uh, who's coming up, uh, get turned out as a, uh, to the prostitution world as a, mm. as a kid, but the movie's so deep. It's a book called Ocean View. The, it comes from the book. It's so deep and and entailed that, you know, I think it's gonna be a great story. So I do like them kind of movies, scary movies. Then I also got the so-called best, my so-called best friend, basically a story uh, based on two people that uh, came up together and caught their whole lives. So they take insurance out on each other in high school, in college, they land together. Yeah. But they go move to two different areas. Mm -hmm. But every year, they uh, meet up for the summer to hang out. But this year, they both fucked up and need some money. So they don't think of how to kill each other. But <laughs> they got their accident. So it's a comedy. So that's going to be coming. funny. Man, that's going to be hard, yeah. man. So, I man, can't wait for I, that. I, I tell you, man, I just, like I said, I, I just appreciate you for your independent grind, baby. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? That's so hard because it give other people a way. You know what I'm saying? People don't look at that. Everybody didn't have a way, like you said exactly, earlier. Exactly. They will just, you either were big or nothing. Right. Yeah. You know, wasn't no in between. Like, you couldn't get in the dope. But you remember, it was a time, remember when they first started, this era we doing, time repeats itself. I love history. So history repeats itself. Yeah. There was a moment, we remember when Mike Jones and Master People put up in DVDs. Yeah, I remember that. movies, they'll sell them in, in the hood yeah. stores. Yeah, yeah. They was, they was doing good. And people were coming out of film school and learning how to work them cameras. Yeah. But nowadays, they shoot movies with phones. So uh -huh. yeah. Get, get it how I you live right now. Yeah, yeah. And that, because the technology is getting better and better. Oh, right. man. Technology moves fast. Cousin, my cousin Smoking B doing some things uh, called 4-6, uh, go out finally, 4-6 Sanders. He got this, this bird called... Uh, um, Sanders, four six Sanders, he's been on the news. He feed homeless people. You go follow, him, check him out. He's doing a great thing with this bird, and um, but he, he want to show me with his iPhone the things you can do with. Him. I'm like, I'm spending one hundred fifty thousand dollars. He's spending number two hours of his and time. And we'll kick your butt, <laughs> killing me, we'll kill yeah. you with the scenes and the way that they, the angles. It's something about a person who knows how to shoot. Right. Got the they eye. can, they got an eye for it, and you can't beat them. They can have a phone, <laughs> and you can have eighty cameras. It don't matter. They good at what they do. Yeah. Like Say said. check it, man. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. man How can people get a hold to you if they trying to get a role, oh, man? man. Y'all can follow me. It's it's ITS. It's just money ENT on Instagram or, or Carter or more on Instagram or Facebook. I believe it's Steve O. It's just money or Steve O. Love, one of the two. But it's just money ENT on Instagram. The world's smoothest. <laughs> Sexiest tequila ever made. Black on. Hey. So no more support, no more patron. Support your own. Carter more tequila. All the stores, if they ain't there asked about it, let's support each other, y'all. Yeah, he I, just don't I, know that that bottle going home with me today. Oh, it's definitely y'all okay. bottle. That's y'all bottle. I there. gotta ask you a question because I thought about you when you and Boosie linked up. Like, how did y'all even link up for you to even do the, the deal with him mm. when y'all was going around doing y'all tour? Uh, when me and Boosie, uh, it's crazy. I met Boosie back in the 90s, something like 97, 98. No, I remember about 2000. And uh, he came to my, Milwaukee to do a show. I was talking to his manager at the time. And, uh, Somehow the manager missed the flight. This is how guy I work. Wow. So Boosie got in the car with me, and we rode around. I made him about $30,000 in like three hours on Versus. That's this, big. This, this is when he first started. That's now. big. Same Boosie badass we know today. This is when Boosie, uh, the youngest of the camp, and uh, Ghetto Stories is out. So he, you know, he fucked with me, right? So he ended up going to jail, though. I remember. So when he first get out, my cousin, dude, the devil got a son by the name of Wave Chappelle, who was rapping with Yo Gotti at the time. There's that Boosie house, and Boosie's like, they was like, we from Milwaukee. They like, y'all from Milwaukee, man? Yeah, I know Steve-O. Like, that's my cousin. They like, get him on the phone. So we chopped it up, right? And I ended up, I ended up moving to Atlanta. My mother, mother passed, so I ended up moving to Atlanta. He cleared my hair for a little bit. And he called me over to his crib, and I was talking to my guy Slab, introduced me to this uh, strawberry uh, kiwi uh, vodka. Mm. I take it to him, right there on the spot in his front room, we made a deal. He said, we're gonna call this shit Boosie Juice. And we went hard in the paint, we rocked it, and we started selling it. The people we was with didn't go too good with them. So we got back down, me and my man Alex got together with Boosie, and we went to with this company, that's where we made McCartier. It's the first, uh, it's a black owned cognac, and it's, um, it has the first and only apple cognac. Really? Wow. Now you had Crown Royal, that's whiskey. Right. And this is a true apple oh. cognac that mm. people love. That it's called McCartier. Good. It's owned by Boosie, so they ain't like these other rappers we get an endorsement deal. Actually, he is. So support that, y'all. Wow. Especially Big, South. Man. It's all through Dallas right now. All the stores in Dallas. Let's go. Houston. Let's you know, go. Say Atlanta. Let's go. Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. I gotta go to support the liquor store when I get back. Let's yeah. get it. It's gonna be in the store. M-E-R-C-A-D-I-E-R. Cartier Cognac. 
the best cognac on the on the, on the market, killing us. Man, you got a gift, man, to uh, link people together and, and to bring uh, different situations together, man. Yeah, Thank you for your contribution to our man, culture, man. I think y'all, man. Boss talk one on one. Man, what a boss talk. Introduce to the world. Y'all go, hey, Dallas, t- Texas, Houston, and everybody that watches. Trust nobody too. Trust nobody one. You ain't seen it first, but trust nobody too is a must see. They talk about they call this like the new juice, man. It I, is. I, I, I didn't see it that way. But I enjoyed right? it. Everybody fat, but like man, it's like juice. I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. Well, it is. You. That's juice the way he whacking. Yeah. I'm gonna give him that much. Yeah. <laughs> he was terrible. <laughs> was terrible. I didn't think that you said that was your brother. My, my brother, uh, rest in peace, my brother Ra Ra. Parts, parts of fools like three people I know. One of them was my brother Ra. He's a he was a terrorist in, in the mm. town. I had to say, police ended up killing him. If wow. I feel there's some some undercover police on a drug deal going to rob, they're trying to rob the police. And the police was trying to uh, some crooked cops. Yeah, big shootout. He died like that. My friends like Pappy and a couple other guys that were like. So he's made up a lot of different characters that, wow. that I really hung around and knew. You know? Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Top three movies. I'm gonna have to get him some. Mm-hmm. Top three movies of all time yeah. that you, yeah, that you, you would pick as your top three movies. Mm. I wish we would have said rappers. I mean, he's oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on 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 the player side. I love uh, Willie Dynamite. Okay, I don't know like Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> okay, so I love that. I have to go with. Uh, I love, I'm going to put the movie Seven in there. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a good movie. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. That's a good that. movie. And then. Uh, Last and final one. Yeah. I like old school movies. Go ahead. Stuff, man. Uh, it could be a Richard Pryor movie. I love Richard Pryor movie. Bustin' Loose. I love Bustin' Loose. I like Bustin' Loose. I love too. Moving, Stir Crazy. Moving, yes, Stir Crazy. Which one is yeah. it? Anybody from Rich Pryor, I, I just love. Come on, Jojo Dancer. Hey, okay. check it, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, brother. All we right. appreciate you, brother. And if All you right. anytime you need us, we pulling up anyway. Oh man, I appreciate y'all. I hear. Get a shout out to King of Diamond. Got man, the shout I, out. I, I, I've Akinelli. been thinking about that. Thank you, Akinelli, man. For letting us use your joint yeah, Atlanta. Man. Boss talk came to Atlanta just to mess with us, man. I appreciate that a lot. Man. That's real, man. And, and, and that's the way we're gonna keep doing it. We're gonna pull up. We're gonna we, show and out. Sell Ricardo Moore and McCarty in King of Diamonds, y'all too. So oh, I can yeah. Reorder. Man, take it, man. <laughs> hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out. Appreciate it. Man.